All right, picking up where we left off yesterday. Um, we talked about covalent bonds. Yesterday we talked about single bonds, how they're the weakest, they're the longest. An example is hydrogen. When hydrogen bonds to itself, let me get a pen here. When hydrogen bonds to itself, <coughs> it bonds with just a simple single bond. It shares two electrons and that's all it is. All the stuff that we did yesterday was all about single bonds. Then the double bonds, and the triple bonds, they're both shorter, they're both stronger, triple bonds being the strongest. Um, I'll show you how to draw these in a second, but just to show you an example, oxygen double bonds to itself. So when you see two dashes like this, I know it looks like an equal sign, but it's actually a double bond. You know, here's one bond, here's the second bond. Each line still represents two electrons. So if each line is two electrons, that means we have a total of four electrons in a double bond. And like nitrogen, when it bonds to itself, it's actually a triple. Whoa, the nitrogen bonds to itself. So triple bond right there. So how do you draw these? Well, you pretty much follow the exact same steps that we did yesterday. But we're going to add one right at the end. So what is the structure for silicon dioxide? First, identify what you have. You have silicon and you have dioxide. So we have one silicon, we have two oxygens. So then you draw out your electron dot structures. We got one silicon with four dots. We have two oxygens at six dots each. So that gives us a grand total of one, two, three, four, plus two times six, or 16 electrons. So now you draw them with the first element in the center, your other elements radiating out from it, and connect it. Subtract your bonded electrons. Remember, each bond stands for two electrons. So we have two, four electrons. Now our 16 goes down to 12. Now you look at your outer elements. What do they need in order to have their full octet? Well, this oxygen currently has two electrons, so it needs six more. This oxygen currently shares two electrons with silicon, so it also needs six more. That's 12 electrons. We're now at zero. Here's where the change comes in. Yesterday, you would be done at this point. But now you need to look and go, are all of my elements happy? Do they all have at least an octet? So this oxygen has eight L or electrons, so it's happy. Silicon here, ooh, he's only got four. So we got two here, we got two here, only has four. So it needs two more, or two more sets of electrons, four more electrons total. But we don't have any electrons left. So what do you do when you run out of something? Well, you borrow from somebody else. So silicon can borrow two electrons from here, and they can go from being lone pairs on the oxygen by itself to being a shared pair with the silicon. So now you have a double bond there. Well, is silicon happy now? No, it's only got six. One, two, three times two gives us six electrons, so we need two more. Now here's where you go, okay, do you take it again from the same oxygen, or do you now take from the other one? We can't keep borrowing from the same person, so you got to borrow from the other guy. So now these two lone pairs of electrons will come over and be shared with silicon. Now is silicon happy? Well, it's got one, two, three, four bonded pairs, which corresponds to eight electrons, so yeah, it's happy. And this oxygen over here has four bonded electrons, four lone pair electrons, which adds up to eight, so everybody's happy, and the final result is oxygen double bonded to a silicon double bonded to another oxygen, and each oxygen has two lone pairs like that. Doing another example, Lewis structure for hydrocyanic acid, formula is HCN. Uh, draw your Lewis structure or your electron dot structures first for H, C, and N. H gets one dot, carbon gets four, nitrogen gets five. Add them all up, you have ten electrons that you're dealing with. Whenever you have a carbon, it automatically goes in the middle. Other elements on the outside. So now subtract your bonded electrons from your total. So we have four bonded electrons here, so now we're down to six. Now look at your outer elements. Does hydrogen need any more to be complete? No, it has two. That's all hydrogen's allowed to have. So now look at nitrogen. It has two, but nitrogen is an octet, so it needs six more. So now we're out of electrons. Now look, is everybody happy? Is hydrogen happy with two? Yes, it is. Is carbon happy with two, four? No, it wants 
four more electrons or two more pairs. Well, it can't borrow anything from the hydrogen because hydrogen doesn't have anything to borrow from. So it's going to borrow from the nitrogen here. And so this is going to become a shared pair. And it's going to borrow from the nitrogen here. And this is going to become a shared pair. And so what you end up with as your final answer is hydrogen single bonded to a carbon, triple bonded to a nitrogen, and nitrogen still has one lone pair. Now moving on to polyatomic ions. These are things that are made up of many atoms. And then ion means with a charge. So kind of just like molecules, you know, except that now they have a charge. And you have to deal with that charge at step three. Step three was count up your total valence electrons. Well, if polyatomic ion has a negative charge, like uh, phosphate, PO4 with a negative three charge, well, this negative three means that this whole entire set has three extra electrons added onto it. So once you figure out the total valence electrons here, you gotta add three more to account for the negative three charge. And the flip side of that, if it's positive. So if we had the ammonium polyatomic ion with a plus one charge, well that means that this whole set of bonded atoms has lost an electron from somewhere. And so you have to subtract it from the total number. And then also when you're done, you wanna draw brackets around the entire Lewis structure and then put your charge on the outside of it as a superscript. So let's practice. Let's do sulfate. Sulfate is 1s and 4 oxygens with an overall negative 2 charge. So each sulfur has 6 dots. Each oxygen has 6 <coughs> dots for a grand total of 30 electrons. But remember, we have a negative two charge, which means two more electrons have been squeezed in here somewhere. So that now becomes 32 electrons that we need to deal with. So when you're drawing it, you put the first element in the center, put your oxygens coming off of it, bond them, subtract that out. So you subtract your bonded atoms, you have eight, not atoms, um, bonded electrons. So you subtract your eight bonded electrons, leaves you with 24. Now we need to figure out what our outer elements need to satisfy an octet. And each oxygen already has two, so each oxygen needs six more. So you throw those on there. And that took care of all of our remaining 24 electrons. Now you just gotta check, is everybody happy? Does each element have at least an octet? And it does, so yay, we're happy. No double bonds or triple bonds in this one, so we just draw a bracket around it, put our negative two on the outside, and yay, we are done. For our last example, we're gonna do ozone. And ozone is just three oxygen atoms bonded together, so we have three times oxygen. Each oxygen has six, so a total of 18 electrons. We don't have a charge here, so we can just stick with the 18. And when you have three identical atoms bonded together, just line them up and connect them. So that took care of four electrons, knocks us down to 14. Look at your outer elements and see what they need. In this case, each oxygen again needs six. That took care of 12, leaves us with two. And remember, any leftover electrons go on the central atom. Is everybody happy? Well, this oxygen has eight. This oxygen only has six. It's got the four bonded electrons plus two lone pairs, so it actually needs one more pair. So do we borrow from the left guy or from the right guy? In actuality, you can borrow from either one. We can only borrow from one at a time, so you could have this possibility or you could have this possibility. And both of these are equally correct if we draw the lone pairs on here. Put those on here. Neither one of these is more correct than the other. And so when you have a situation like this where both of these are equally possible uh, Lewis structures, you say that you actually have a mixture of both. And it's called resonance structures. So resonance structure, basically what happens is some scientists will argue, okay, it's, you know, the molecule bounces or resonates 
between these two structures and it just does it so quickly that you can't really tell which one's which. Or some scientists will say, nah, it's an average of these two guys and you actually have like a bond and a half here and a bond and a half here. Just know that it's both of these guys either average together or oscillating between the two of them. That's all you really have to know. And then you can read in your book on your own about covalent network bonding. It's kind of a cool thing because it explains how gemstones work. So if you're interested in the whole jewelry thing with like rubies and sapphires and diamonds and crystals and stuff like that, then you should read about covalent network bonding because it's kind of cool. And I'll see y'all Thursday in class. Adios.